Good evening. Thank you very much for inviting me to talk to you tonight. And it is a pleasure and a privilege to speak to you about my old school bus call. So thank you for your interest in, in it. Personally, I have the fondest memories of my time there, which became of necessity, but also because of the skill, love and dedication of the staff, our new home. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Even the essential tasks with which we students had to help were made to seem fun. To this day, aged 92, um, I have never forgotten this practical and useful ditty which we composed. It was aimed at a messy girl in my room mm -hmm. and we left it in our bathroom for everyone to see. And it said, it should be everybody's duty to keep the bathroom in its beauty. Everybody ought to know one cleans the bath with chemical. <laughs> <laughs> no more nonsense. <laughs> so that was one thing. From a child's perspective, without the full benefit of what we know now of the appalling wider historical context, it seemed to me like a holiday, although it was not without its own concerns. The experience gave me invaluable skills for taking forward into my adult life. I was born Ruth Boronov in Breslau, now Rotslov in Poland in 1924, where I had a blissful upbringing as an assimilated German Jew. Uh, my parents amicably divorced when I was eight years old, after which my mother and I moved to a flat in the Sachs. I often visited my father and brother who had stayed in, the, in our flat, for family flat, which was also my father's dental practice in the center of the town. And one day when I was 12 years old, I chanced upon a parade taking place in Breslau and was only about 20 feet away as Hitler passed by, standing up in an open top car. And I felt it, it wisest to blend in with the crowd at that time by raising my arm in the high Hitler salute. So that was very memorable to me. It was November 1938 when Kristalna took place, I remember that my mother sent me out to go and warn my, our friends that my, my father had been arrested and taken to Buchenwald. Luckily, he was only there for a month and survived it. We still have the original postcard he sent us from there, heavily censored but the condition of his release was that the family must leave Germany. And so it came to be that in March 1939, as he stayed behind for a while to settle his affairs in Germany, my mother and I said farewell to him at, at Breslau's train station. After a stop to visit relatives in Berlin, and a three-day sea journey, my mother and I arrived in Southampton on the United States Line luxury cruise ship, the SS Manhattan. <laughs> so, on our transfer to London, we were met by my father, who had flown over to surprise us. This is one of the last photos taken of me in Germany before we left. I was in our, it was in our garden, proudly wearing a new outfit specially bought for me for the emigration. And here is one of the first taken on our arrival in London. I was 14 years old.
Shortly after we got here, my mother took me to stay at Brunt's Court. My father had known Lotte Kalischer, the music teacher there. He'd known her since Breslau, and she had recommended it. In preparing for this talk, my daughter Jackie and I re re a selection from approximately 70 letters I wrote to my parents and brother during those years. Step this still got. I think they really give the flavour of what our days there were like and what the school's ethos was. So I'd like to share some memories with you with quotes from them and with thanks to my daughter Jackie who helped me enormously to put this together, talk together. I have to confess that in Germany I was never keen on school. <laughs> <laughs> my mother often had to force me to finish my French homework before I was allowed to get out to play tennis with my friends. So when I got to England, I declared I did not want to go to school. <laughs> this, pro this posed an interesting dilemma for Bunce Court, who handled it in a very wise and respectful way, supporting me in gradually coming to my own decision. They had me stay in a nearby house, Kenneways. <laughs> Um, where some other girls at the school also boarded. Do you remember Kenneth? Yes. No. You were busted from Kenneth? Yeah, busted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They could walk too. Yeah. Each morning they went off to school together laughing and I was left alone with the housekeeper who put me to work cleaning the windows and doing other very mundane tasks. In the evening, the girls would return with exciting tales of their school day and what they had done and learned. In due course, I was given the option of doing the housework at Kenaway's in the morning and going to join the other girls and boys at Bunce Court in the afternoon. It was not very long before I decided that going to school full-time was preferably after all so that I could take a full part in the very vibrant community. I wrote to my parents in May of that first year, still in German. Daddy, you are somewhat right in your suggestion that I first had the idea of going to school because I didn't feel I fitted into the household. But hardly thought. And I would think all the time I must make the success of it at school because I want to learn something. <laughs> I won't. It, it won't be easy. I want to be on, on the contrary, but I want to try to advance myself through an acceptable standard of work. I will have to do schoolwork in the rest hour. Uh, we had read every day, rest hour yeah. at lunchtime. Um, but I'll make a huge effort, and hopefully, someone will be at my side in the early days, and that would make, me, uh, make things a bit easier, mm -hmm. as you might imagine. <laughs> and indeed, once could help me to grow to the extent that already in October that year I was writing to my parents. In quotes, today I want to find out about French. I definitely like to be included in the French class. Do you remember how I sat at home in the dining room and with bated breath, bated breath, awaited daddy's promise that I would not have to learn French? And that shows just how much I've changed. <laughs> A letter dated spring 1939 describes an early encounter with Anna Essinger. Tante Anna, or T.A., as we called her. To tell the truth, I was a bit scared of her. A lot of us seemed to be. 
not least because she wore very thick glasses. <laughs> it says, T.A. leave me heute viel mal in den Weg. <laughs> Schrecklich. <laughs> 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 I read it uh, four times, it was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's horrible. If you want, in English, I, I bumped into, what I say, I bumped into TA four times today, ghastly. <laughs> <laughs> a letter to my parents a month later, written mostly in English, mixed with the odd German word describes a typical day and how the care of us as individuals, practical considerations and formal learning were always artfully blended. <coughs> now I'll tell, I will try to tell you my day today. Um, in the morning I went to Miss Karnischer, the music lady teacher and she told me a lot of you all and also in what class I shall come. We had lessons with open doors. They were the same that we saw there. Open doors first our mathematics, then biology, history, English and German. The um, mathematics was the mathematics we stayed in our class and we made things which I don't know. In biology, we took auseinander apart <laughs> and read it. That's what I wrote. The letters still half English and half German. Auseinander apart. A rabbit and the bauch, stomach, and do I do that? Took, took out all the Eingeweide, all the guts. It was very interesting. <laughs> so, in history, we went to the Open Air Theatre. You, you know it, you know it, don't you? Because you came to take me there in the first place. And there we played the Entwicklung, the development of a war. Is that right? Yes, the development of a war. I haven't understood anything. <laughs> <laughs> Every day we got up at 6.15, stayed, started the day with gym. That was nice, which I loved. It was, it has stood me in very good stead ever since. A recent visit to my GP resulted in her audibly gasping in surprise at my agility instead of expressing the empathy for which I had been hoping. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how, even lunchtime, when teachers and children joined hands and Tante Anna would say, children love one another, and if that's not possible, at least respect one another was used as an opportunity for reinforcing our sense of community and social responsibility towards others. That's, that was quite yeah. a good picture. Birthday and festivals were always lovingly observed by making music together, and music was a very important part of both our education and leisure time at one school. Not all lessons were formal. One day, Heitsche, our cook, Gretel Heitsche, sent round a message to the girls saying that if any of us was interested in receiving sex education, she would arrange a lesson. And a group of girls, friends, and I took her up on that. Oh. <laughs> now I'm interested. Now I'm really interested. The whole shower comes in again. Up, up, on, up on that offer. <laughs> <laughs> Such was the atmosphere at the school that it wasn't in the least awkward or embarrassing. Rather, we considered it very helpful. This lesson, like all others, was given in English. <laughs> We were discouraged from speaking German, even amongst ourselves in our leisure time. 
Tara Anna felt it was part of our duty in becoming British citizens to speak only English. And by June 1940, I was writing to my parents, we speak to German, we speak no German word anymore. <laughs> what is very pleasant. <laughs> Once the war started, we children were expected to help with additional duties. For example, I quote from a letter of the 6th of September 29. We had to do a lot with blackout. Every window has got his curtains. The, his curtains. <laughs> Every day there is written down the time when we have to black out. Now it is 7.30 and we are allowed to have the light on till a quarter past nine. <laughs> we have to have a chair beside our bed, a pair of shoes and stockings, and the gas mask has to, be, has to lie on it. Once we had a rehearsal, and today early in the morning we were warned from Fabersham. So we went down in the hall, but everything was all right again and we could get dressed. And we were all allowed to listen, and we were allowed to listen to the six o'clock news, but there, was, there is also always everything important written down in the hall. Today we have got lovely weather in the morning. I, I had to iron one and a half hours, but not for me only for the sewing room. I, sh <laughs> I schwitzed it. <laughs> I sweated appallingly. <laughs> the teachers taught by offering positive encouragement. Tante Anna never called me to come and see her to tell me off, only to praise me. Oh, for example, a postcard dated 11 September 1941, sent to my father, referring to my matriculation exam, and says, I passed. Imagine that. Really, I'm still quite pain and trembling. <laughs> <laughs> but TA just came in and brought the news. She even gave me a kiss, and she said, I'm especially glad about you. Clearly, whatever other talents I may have had, no one, including me, had expected I would excel academically, but the school had helped me to focus and to succeed. The school, you know, the way she taught. Worm Layton, our English teacher, who we affectionately called Wormy, <laughs> wrote encouraging comments in my English essays, such as, there is some of your, there is some of your best writing here. The essay is very well conceived and sustains the interest from the opening sentence to the last. Very promising work. So that was that. <laughs> <laughs> to the extent that in February '41, I wrote to my father. Hope it doesn't bore you now. No. <laughs> I wrote to my father. He was quite strict. <laughs> now, what do I have to tell you from here? There is one good news. I have attempted an essay last week, not a descriptive story, and have written about the right to work. And I succeeded. Wormy, our English teacher, was pleased. So was I. And now, as I know, I am able to write essays, I will write a number of masterpieces. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, question mark. I do write long letters now, don't I? <laughs> In June 1940, Anna Essinger was told at three days' notice to evacuate the school. She found three was it three days? It was ten, three days. Oh, right, sorry. About I'm going to go to the children. I'm going to go to the children. I'm going to go to the children. I'm going to go to the children.
noticed her regular at the school. She found Trench Hall in Wem, Shropshire, and another detailed letter from me describes the move and the positivity and enthusiasm with which my friends and I adapted to yet another new environment. At this point, I caused the school to be faced with a, compli with a complicated dilemma, which again they handled very great, with great sensitivity. My mother, Kate Boronov, had, been, had just been freed from internment on the Isle of Man, and as she moved to Wem to be near me, she was looking for a job in a local school as a piano teacher. I asked TA if Bunce Court School could find her such a position. TA thoughtfully explained, no, we couldn't do that. To have you with your mother here wouldn't do the other children any good. Wow. And uh, wouldn't do the other children any good. My mother did eventually find a position at a girls' boarding school, the Grove School in Wem. She lived in a converted stable there for 17 happy years until retirement, long after I had left school and Wem for London. So that was really very good that she was able to yeah. live there. And she had friends there and all sorts. The Grove School in Wem. She lived. Yes, so we, we, uh, did I say she lived in a converted stable? Yeah. yeah. It was it was a stable once, but at the end of, she had her own piano in there. It was quite big, really, and uh, cooking facilities, and it was like really rather nice. And we visited her, and every, people from everywhere. London used to come for a little break. There was no, you know, in the war, it was just lovely. She lived in a converted stable for 17 happy years and retired long after I'd left school. It was a fine line for TA to resolve the issue of my mother, not only being alive and in the UK, but within walking distance of me. None of the other pupils had their parents in the UK at all, and as we afterwards learned, many had tragically been murdered in the camps. So I was allowed to visit my mother with the school's permission, which was given only occasionally, thus hopefully making a potentially awkward situation more acceptable to everyone. At Bunce Court, there were several people who reached the top of their careers and world fame, such as Frank Auerbach, the painter. In my class alone were Gerhard Hoffnung, uh, the humorous musical cartoonist, Peter Morley, the filmmaker, and not to spare his blushes. Lothar Baruch, now <laughs> Professor Leslie Brent. Amongst his many professional accolades, Leslie and his colleagues were nominated for a Nobel Prize in Immunology. Immunology? Immunology. Got it? Which, uh, which his team. Um, which is team one. London's Hammersmith Hospital has the Leslie Brandt Laboratory and a school in Berlin recently named an annual prize in his and Anna Essinger's joint honor. Is that so? Yeah, it's very good. Mm -hmm. Was all this an incredibly coincidence? Likely not, and Anna Essinger and Bunce Court must surely share some of the credit for empowering people to attain their full potential, despite the absolutely terrible circumstances. I hope that gives you some idea of the way the school helped me personally 
to grow and develop and become independent and resourceful in a way that has proved a fantastic asset throughout my adult life. I will always be most grateful to Bunn School for those much treasured and invaluable years which despite the horrors going on in the wider world, which inevitably also touched our lives forever, lovingly gave its pupils the skills and spiritual strength to strive. See. children um, who, who want to see them succeed and be the next generation of making a difference. Yeah. And I personally was fortunate to go to such a school um, that after some detours made me become a teacher because I came back from abroad and I was asked what I want to do and I said, I have no idea. There's so many possibilities. I could do this and that and that. But what I really want to do is give something back. And that was um, 18 years ago. And then I became a teacher at a Steiner school, and now I'm here. And yeah. it just gave me this extra bit of power. And I hope to the parents and the teachers and everyone who's here from the school as well, that we want to make the school a place where children, 80 years later, say, I've been inspired mm -hmm. by the school and um, it's helped me live a wonderful life. So, thank you for encouraging us with your story. Well, I it's been good to you all. I mean, I've, I've, I've written how many letters? 70. And I have left them in a corner for a long, long time. I didn't even know. The letters I don't know what got in there. You should publish yes. those letters, yes. especially to a German-English yes. speak. <laughs> and the, just the development of yeah, how you switch into... Happy. Yes, you were. I think my life was very happy with all this that's going on. And yeah. I never, my brother didn't make it so well. We did make it. He did make it in the end, but, but he died very young. Yeah. Yeah. But thank you so much for sharing your story. It's, it's been very, I don't know how you feel, but I felt very blessed very to good. meet you and to have you here. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. P92, starting a career as a lecturer. <laughs> <laughs> you just started your career as a lecturer. Lecturer. <laughs> Which one are you? Which one did you have? I was on the right. Which one? Right. On the 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 right. I'd like to have her to go there. Well, when I saw the pictures, I thought as much. <laughs> but I'd like to ask you some questions. Yes, yeah, you should. Um, I do ask you one afterwards. Yes, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to do. Like, yeah. 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 Well, I'm quite a few people that she only had one week point. I can't hear you, darling. It is said by some old bunch horses that T.A. had a weak, weakness. And the weakness was that she, on the whole, preferred boys to girls. Oh, yes, you said that. I don't know whether that is your experience. Yeah. But, for example, she encouraged boys to continue some kind of academic career. She had great expectations on that. But for girls, to you know, become a secretary or... For example, Anne-Marie Meyer, who was a very clever girl, yeah. became a secretary, and then eventually the, the secretary of the Warburg Institute, and became a very great influence there. But on the whole, her expectation of girls mm. were lower. Did you think that? I can't say that myself, no. I didn't, I didn't have very much to do with her. Yeah. But my mother was very much it's interesting that the list of famous people from the school there is predominantly men. Yeah. 
I think it was. I mean, but with all reform pedagogy, I think this this picture of what men should do, being a provider, and going out in the world, and what women should do, might still have been part of her. Just because I mean, she was born in the in, in the nineteenth century, so it's probably yeah. still very much just the general thinking. Yeah, yeah. could be. I think it's it might have been with many other um, reform pedagogic schools as well. Just that time of, yes. of the development, but um, yeah. Uh, then again, we're still struggling. So. Quite <laughs> it was one exception in that she had her parents in yeah. England. Mm. Most of us didn't. Some of the Kinderton children who came over were after the war reunited with their parents who had survived in Germany yeah. in dire circumstances very often. Mm -hmm. And that was quite difficult, could be quite difficult because of the experience of the parents mm -hmm. during the war years and the fact that the child had become very English yeah. and, um, mm -hmm. and very often it didn't work. They just couldn't get on with each other. Yeah. Oh, which okay. is very tragic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Has anyone seen the play Kinder Transport? No. no. It uh, was recently performed by Rada. Oh, yes. yes, and uh, it's not performed by Rada, but it was written by, by, uh, by uh, Samuels. It's a very interesting play, about, which packs a lot into it, actually, mm -hmm. but perhaps too much, but it's a very fascinating about the problems between a mother and her daughter who are reunited. When, when I did my radio program, on, after I've done the newspaper article about it, it was about, I was asked by Radio Deutsche Welle to interview uh, Martin Lubowski, who was also one of your uh, fellow uh, pupils uh, from Barnes Court. And they wanted to frame it uh, within the refugee framework of the Syrian uh, refugees and the middle uh, Mediterranean catastrophe. What strikes me, and that was uh, the, 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 the grain of that, of that small feature that I made, is that this school that the two of you were at brought the best out of you and led you into this successful mm -hmm. life and career. And when we look back now, in this day and age, at the refugee crisis, we see, you know, uh, people who, with torn clothes, and, and who, who some people on the, on the far right think they will never integrate, there will be a problem, and yet you are the best proof mm -hmm. to us that refugees are an asset. But if only given the chance. Yes, I and that for me is the power of uh, I told you to that yeah, yeah. that's the point I made in my speech and yeah. yeah. the interviews I've given to various people. Uh, refugees are considered to be a problem, a burden. But I don't know anyone who came over in the Kinder Transport who hadn't made a solid contribution to that in this country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm quite sure that any refugee children came in now who would love one. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it is so awful that from the best thing as a burden and a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's did you ask Leslie your question already? Because I'm really curious what that question <laughs> is. You were going to oh. ask me a question. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Löwen, Erika Löwen. That's one of the things. Oh, yeah, that's the Yeah, but do you remember? She, she died, didn't she? She died recently. I think she's died, her brother's still alive. It is, it is. It is. Okay. He published his own poetry about yeah. five or six years ago. We shared the. Which I reviewed for the AI Journal. <laughs> and I gave a good review, but I have to say, I was always sort of defined that the Palestinians weren't mentioned. 
Thank you so much. Um, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Um, oh, yes, and um, you know, I, I don't have to know. we'll see. <laughs> but for more people, I think we really have a lot to, to tell and to contribute. And just, that's just the energy that comes from it. You know, I had, I had a very long week last week, and I'm having a long week ahead of me. But now, seeing you two being so <laughs> upbeat and doing this, it's really. <laughs> <laughs> Some power came over here, so thank you for that. <laughs> yes, it's incredible. <laughs> so thank you so much, and I hope I hope you're going to publish this somehow. Yeah. That would be really great. Publish it. Publish it. Well, you publish it, right? Yeah. Good. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs>